वेलकम इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑन क्रिस्टबेल पार्ट फर्स्ट अ पोएम रिटन बाय एस टी कोलरिच सैमुअल टेलर कोलरिच इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एनालाइज एंड एक्सप्लेन द पोएम फॉर यू फ्यू स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑफ द पोएम फॉर यू क्रिस्टबल पार्ट फर्स्ट इज प्रेस्क्राइब and ba part 2 english literature paper 1 poetry and drama i am dr vinita bhadoria associate professor of english in government college bahrod in the previous videos i have given a brief introduction of uh, samuel taylor coleridge a romantic poet and the background and introduction of the poem christabel part first christabel was written in two parts first part is consisted with 337 lines so it's a long narrated poem and it is impossible to cover the whole poem or discuss the whole poem in one video today i'll discuss only 42 lines of the poem tis the middle of night by the castle rock and the owls have awakened the crowing cock chew with chew wo and the hawk again the crowing cock how drowsily it crew This is the first stanza of the poem Tristambul it projects on our minds the image of a medieval english castle castle is palace the details of the castle are scattered all over the poem on the basis of these details we can describe it as a woodland castle woodland palace the wood stands at a distance of about a furlong from the palace gate the palace is surrounded by a moat presumably spanned by a small bridge in the in this poem the poet has represented the medievalism of the english people on a grand scale here we have poetic visions of medieval english civilization english culture and english superstitions etc so describing this palace the poet says that the castle clock was striking 12 that is midnight time midnight hour it wakes up the owls which hoot and this is the sound of owls to with to hoot the says the owls hooting wakes the cock and presently it grows very drowsily why drowsily because it is midnight time it is not the morning so the very first line of the poem is full of action and creates suspense to make the readers aware that this is really going to be a great poem sir leoline the baron rich hath a toothless mastiff which from her kennel beneath the rock she maketh answer the clock four for the quarters and 12 for the hour ever and a by shine and sar 16 short howls not over loud some say she sees my lady shout sir leoline is the owner of this palace कोलरिज डिस्क्राइब इन दिस पोएम तो इन दीज लाइन्स सिक्स टू थर्टीन द पोइट इन्फॉर्म्स अस दैट द कासल ओनर द रिच बैरन लिव लाइन हैज़ अ टूथलेस मस्टिफ विच मस्टिफ इज अ वराइटी ऑफ डॉग शी लाइज इन हर कैनल पेनी द रॉक When the clock strikes a quarter after eleven p.m., she howls twelve times. 
whether it is rainy or moonlight she always makes 16 howls from 11 to 12 which are short and moderately loud the poet further says that some people of the castle or palace says that at the time she perceives lady leoline's ghost who is lady leoline her wife the owner's wife that keeps wandering here and there ghost of that lady because lady is dead in the palace as we know that college is well known for creating supernatural elements through his poem and this very quality of the poet is best depicted when he talks about the howling of the she bitch that gives an answer to the cloaks each strikes is the night chilly and dark the night is chilly but not dark the thin grey cloud is spread on high it covers but not hides the sky the moon is behind and at the full and yet she looks both small and dull the night is chill the cloud is grey tis a month before the month of may and the spring comes slowly up this way in the next stanza of the poem the suspense become more deeper though as of now the poem is presented to in terms of a suspense story it becomes clear there is something to be served to us in terms of something unique in these lines the poet asks him question and then answers himself when he asks is the night very cold and dark is the night cold or dark yes he answers himself the night is very cold indeed but not dark the thin grey cloud is spread on high that means the sky is covered with a layer of thin grey clouds yet the clouds cannot hid, hide the moon because clouds layer of clouds are very thin the moon is behind and at the full although the moon is behind the clouds yet it is visible as the full moon because the layer of the clouds are very thin the night is chill night is very cold the clouds are grey tis a month before the month of may which month comes before the month of may it's the month of april so the poet is here describes the month of april and the spring comes slowly up this way and spring is to spring is about to arrive spring season is about to begin the spring is gradually showing itself in this rain the lovely lady christabel whom her father loved so well what makes her in the wood so late a furlong from the castle gate she had dreams all yesterday night of her own brother tonight and she in the midnight would be pray for the wheel of her lovers that far away now college introduces the heroine of the poem or the leading character of the poem christabel a pretty lady describing her the poet says christabel is a lovely young lady her father sir leoline loves her so much very much but what brings her at midnight into the wood about a furlong from the gate of palace that is far behind far long from the gate of palace the poet further says that she had dreamt of her lover knight all the while 
she was asleep last night so she has come into the wood at midnight in order to pray for the well-being of her lover who is far away in a distant land here that the introduction of the main character of the poem named christabel is brought to us all of a sudden and in the in these lines she stole along she nothing spoke the sighs she heaved were soft and low and not was green upon the oak but moss and rarest mistletoe she kneels beneath the hues of tree and in silence prayeth she she walks still dilly still dilly chupke chupke and silently in the forest she also breathes softly and lowly on the oak tree there is nothing green except the moss and the mistletoes a parasitic plant which grows rarely on the oak the poet further says having arrived beneath the huge oak tree she kneels and prays silently in the ever the poet has made us familiar with christabel but there is yet to be revealed more the lady sprang up suddenly the lovely lady christabel it moaned as near as near can be but what it is she cannot tell on the other side it seems to be of the huge broad breasted old oak tree in these lines poet also replete with surprising elements we come across surprise and suspense in these lines as the poet himself says that suddenly that lovely lady who is lovely lady christabel springs up mani uchal padi why kyun uchal padi wo hearing a low sound of pain very close to her she has heard some painful sound near her but the poet says she does not understand what it is he listened the sound he heard the sound from the other side of that huge broad and old oak tree so here in this video i have discussed with you 42 lines of the poem rest of the few lines few lines from the rest of the poem i will discuss in the next video thank you very much